Hey guys, what's up? Fan here again, and today I'm going to be uh, bringing you guys another video commentary slash guide on uh, me playing Tassadar this time. And the Tassadar build that I'm going to be doing pretty much uh, makes him into a uh, ranged assassin in terms of his damage output, and it also gives him, uh, you know, an insane amount of vision control pretty much uh, throughout the entire game. Um, now the the skills that we want to focus on here is uh, for the first level you want overload which is increased size storm range by 33%. Um, obviously uh, this is very good because it increases your range allowing you to do more things. You know if you imagine like a hero standing where my uh, cursor is right now that's the farthest range you can storm without the range increase. And a hero at this range can easily you know auto attack you or uh, hit you with spells. However you take this and now you imagine a hero standing at this range, there's no way a hero at this range can auto attack you um, and there's very few spells that uh, can be easily hit from that range. So so it definitely makes uh, you know Tassadar a lot safer, you can play farther back while still hitting their targets and you can also hit their uh, you know their ranged carries and whatnot in their backline um, while standing you know at a pretty safe location. So as far as the Haunted Minds matchup goes, uh, normally in like you know competitive games, you'll have a four-one formation where you'll have four people in the lane your golem is in, pushing as hard as they can, and you'll have one person soaking experience in the uh, secondary lane. However, uh, since this is a pub, we're just gonna lane with whatever they go with, and it looks like we have a two-three split on both sides. Now. Generally, what you want to do with Tassadar, uh, really on any given map, is you want to push as hard as possible, but you want to do so safely. So, uh, you know, basically you want to be pushing as hard as possible at all times, um, but also wary of any ganks. So if there's like two roamers on the map that are constantly missing, then that would be an example of a situation where you wouldn't, be want, where you wouldn't want to push uh, super hard. However, in this game, since I see like most of them on the mini map right now, um, I feel pretty confident, and I'm just gonna go ahead and push every wave into their tower. What this does is, first of all, it gives us lane control. Uh, you know, they can't really trade with us once all their minions are dead because our minions will be hitting them, uh, and they won't have any any minions to help help them out. Um, and the second thing this does, obviously, is once this gets to uh, once this gets to their turrets, we'll be able to get damage on their turrets as well. I'm gonna shield that guy because they're going on him, and you can see right here what I'm talking about. That guy has uh, three archer minions hitting him the entire time he was trading with me, so he lost way more HP than I did. Um, so on this map, you actually do want to get into the mines as fast as possible. I uh, negated to, or you know, I didn't tap as fast as I wanted to, so I have to go back and tap real fast. Um, but yeah, normally you want to go on out into the mines, it's basically instantly. So now we're level 4, uh, I'm going to get Mental Acuity, and I'll explain that later after I'm not fighting. I'm not going in the mines right now because uh, you know they're kind of guarding against the entrance. And I'm going to wait until this guy goes down before I do so. Okay, so I'm going to go down now, get a storm on him, and Raynor has actually managed to kill Tychus, which is really really good. Okay, so in this case, I'm going to instantly start trying to get as many skills as possible here. There is a Rainer here, but I don't really think we can uh, kill the Rainer. Might be able to kill the Brightwing, so I'm going to go on that guy. Oh. Fight back and start trading with this Rainer here. We got him pretty flanked, and uh, he has to back out. I'm not even going to bother chasing him. It looks like someone else went. Um, the skulls are generally a lot more important than like any individual hero kill, unless it's like he's literally one hit away. So I'm just going to ignore it, I'm going to get skills here with my team, and it looks like we have a very favorable distribution because they lost the line fight. Um, so now we want to do the boss ASAP. Sometimes if your team is too low on this map and you don't want to do the uh, boss right away, it's okay for all your low members to heal and like one guy to just kind of keep an eye on it. Um, because if you do try and do the, do the boss when half your team is really low, the other team will oftentimes just come back in, fight you, and then you know, team wipe you and get all 30 skulls that the boss gives. Um, in this situation, we can see that they're pushing on the mini map and they're not going to be contesting this, so this is fine. Um, so back to the skill build. 
the reason why you want mental acuity is because uh, it gives a lot of vision control. It cuts down the cooldown of your oracle by half, and vision is super super important on pretty much every map. Vision is what allows you to get a good team fight going. It allows you to avoid random you know fog of war or bush ganks. And it basically allows you to make informed decisions um, in terms of what objectives you want to take, what camps you want to take, um, and just everything else really. Um, it's basically almost like map hack once you have the entire build down, so it's, it's really really useful. And uh, even in pro games, I see most people uh, you know, taking mental acuity because of the vision control it gives. At level 7, you want Static Charge. This uh, gives you extra auto attack damage on targets that are Psionic Stormed. And um, this is part of what gives you your, uh, you know, your insane ADC level or ranged assassin level damage. The second part is the Double Storm, which will happen later. I should have shielded that guy, but uh, did not make it in time, unfortunately. So I'm going to shield Brightwing instead. I'm not sure why they're contesting the knights so hard here because our golem is pushing super hard right now and they only have two people uh, stopping it. And I mean in the end they're not even, I don't think they can even, you know, contest us off the knights. So this is a very uh, decent trade for us. Now I'm going to check out our golem's status. We should uh, rotate to help our golem if anyone has HP but it looks like no one really does. So I'm just gonna I'm just gonna stay here and start poking because I know there's only two people here and I know they want to focus on that that golem. So I'm gonna poke as hard as I can here, help out the golem as hard as I can, and uh, yep. Okay, so now it's dead. It only got a wall, uh, unfortunately, and that's mainly because they had Asmodan and his laser thingy does uh, a ridiculous amount of damage to golems. But overall, we're still in the lead, so I'm not that worried. So now that we've taken all the objectives on the map, we're basically going to split up and soak until we're 10. First team to hit 10 generally gets like a really big advantage, which you can snowball off of. On this map, you can either use it to snowball off objectives, but usually all the objectives are gone by then. So usually the first team that hits 10 just barrels down both forts, um, because even with a fort, it's not enough to uh, save you from a level 10 disadvantage. And in this case, they're making the uh, smart choice. They're trading with us. Um, so basically, we're, we're going to take that fort, but they're going to get the bottom fort in exchange. And that's actually a really good uh, choice by them. Since they have Asmodan, they're actually going to even, um, you know, they're, they're going to get our fort first. However, Asmodan is really sucky at team fighting, so they're most likely going to get wiped here. I, I know that Tychus is rotating down, so I'm also going to... Oh, actually, Tychus is still up there. Since Tyke is still up there, they're pretty much going to lose most of their heroes here because I rotated down and he didn't. Um, I thought I was matching his rotation, but I guess he, he stayed up there for whatever reason. Okay, so now both teams are level 10, but we got 3 kills off that fight, so we can play really aggressive here. And uh, we should be able to, you know, mow this fort down. Uh, well, the mines are going to open in 20 seconds, so... Um, the proper course of action whenever this happens is you want to go down to the mines. The first team to go down to the mines has a very big uh, advantage since skulls are worth so much. <clears throat> so we, we definitely want to go down to the mines ASAP. Now when you're in the mines, there's two camps that give the most skulls and it's this one and that one. The two camps that I just came on the minimap, these two uh, middle ones. So always get these first if you have like a choice between any camp you want. Which I'm going to do right now. And it uh, looks like they're fighting. So I'm actually not going to fight with my team. Oh, actually. Are they fighting? It looks like they're just picking someone off. But yeah, I'm not going to fight with my team. I'm going to go around and try and secure whatever skulls are left. Because even if you get a couple kills here, the skulls are just more important than, uh, than the team fight. So I'm going to follow that guy around, try and secure some skulls. <coughs> and uh, I actually have to back off here. That guy's actually going to die, I think. He's trying his best, but... Well, he did get him in the end, I guess. I have one more storm. I'm just gonna come back, drop the storm, and leave. And... I'm gonna hide here and start recalling. So this time the skull count is pretty even. Um, 
actually thought we were winning by a lot more. I'm not sure how it's so even. I think they got the boss while we were collecting all the random small camps or something, but you know, in this case, uh, generally you want to defend the stronger golem, which which is their golem. So definitely want to come here and defend this as soon as possible. I'm gonna ping this golem so my teammates get the message, and uh, it's probably gonna get like at least one tower here, but that's okay. I'm gonna shield the thing it's hitting, so so we get a couple more, I guess, a couple more shots off. Shield that tower. Okay, so it didn't didn't even get a tower, so that's good. We had Gazlo, who is really fast at killing golems and whatnot, and we also had my shield. So now we're level thirteen, and they're level thirteen. The game has pretty pretty much evened up, and they they got the knights. So our next course of action has to be to defend this gigantic push. A storm them. And uh, that guy just combo nothing, that's weird. So for my level 13 trait, I'm going to get Scryer, and this is where it gets a bit different. Scryer is not what uh, most people take. In, in fact, I've never really seen anyone but myself take it, but I think it's actually really good. And uh, we have to defend this uh, Cancer push there. And the reason it's so good is, uh, I'll, I'll explain a bit later after we defend this push. So right now we have to defend this push. We're gonna kinda do a flank on them, and I'm just gonna immediately Archon here. That was a really good mob, but since they're between like our towers and our heroes, uh, there's not a whole lot they can do. Plus, Asmodan is really a hero that's uh, pretty shitty at team fighting. Uh, he's only really good for pushing, so... They, they lost that fight pretty convincingly, and I'm gonna storm that guy, and he's dead. Okay. So back to what I was saying, the reason that I wanted to, uh, right, the reason I take Scryer over Prescience for the double E build or Shrink Ray is because, you know, first comparing Scryer to Prescience, Prescience gives you a, another E. So you become invulnerable and invisible for 1.5 seconds. Um, however, you know, this is only really used when you're getting focused down in like a fight or something or if you're getting ganked. That's the only time you can use it and it's only used for survivability. Now, uh, they got the port there, that's good. Now, Scryer, it gives you an uh, increased 3, per three second um, you know, oracle duration, which means that it's a 60% increase in your oracle duration. And on top of that, it gives you, um, it gives you movement speed, 20% movement speed for the entirety of the oracle. So you have 8 seconds of uh, you know, huge vision radius, and you also have uh, 8 seconds of 20% movement speed. And I would argue that 20% movement speed is actually stronger than, you know, it's actually stronger than 1.5 seconds of invulnerability in terms of escaping. And not only that, it's more useful in a bunch of other situations as well. So, for example, you can use it to, like I use it right now, uh, you can use it to maneuver in fights better, uh, get better positioning and whatnot. You can use it to, I'm going to Archon here, by the way. You can use it to escape when you're getting chased, <clears throat> and uh, they're pretty screwed here. You can use it even to just get to place to place faster. So overall, I think eight seconds of twenty percent movement speed is just straight up better than you know one point five seconds of invulnerability, um, and that's the reason I get it. Not to mention, you know, sometimes your second E doesn't even go off uh, if you get like false stat ulted at twenty percent HP or something. Then your second E just like straight up. You know, it's useless. It never goes off before you die because you never drop to 15%. Um, so that's kind of the, my reasoning for that. At level 16, as you can see, I got uh, Second Strike, which lets me cast Double Psionic Storm. And it's really this skill which lets you hit uh, ranged assassin level damage output. Um, you know, two storms. If you know how to storm and you can place them well and you can, uh, you know, not stack them up too much, it actually does an incredibly large amount of damage. And uh, let's, let's kill this queen right here. I'm going to use Prescience here because they're obviously on that, that bush. Storm. Storm. So this guy's trading with me. I don't really care because, uh, you know, we have an 81 skull golem. So the longer they trade with us here, the worse it is for them. Because our golem's going to be killing all their, sh their stuff. Okay, I'm going to use another Prescience. They're still trading, which is absolutely fine with me. Drop a couple more storms there. And 
and uh, they actually got someone. Hmm, that's that's unfortunate, but it doesn't really matter. Drop a couple more storms. I really want to kill that Rainer, but it looks like we're not going to. So I'm gonna come back here and aim this guy who's out of position. Okay, Rainer died, and yeah, at this point our golem is just gonna wreck him, most likely. I'm gonna use my prescience again. I'm actually gonna see if I can kill this queen here. I'm gonna archon for it, and I missed it by just a little bit, but it's not a big deal because I can just use my archon to force down this keep now. Okay, that's dead. And let's we'll storm them a couple more times here before we get out. And I'm just gonna recall here. So, like I was saying, double storm, it, if you don't stack them up too much, you can get an insane amount of damage output with them. And what I mean by stacking storms is really just that, you know, some people will storm and then they'll storm again in like half a second. So, something like this, you know, storm, storm. And that really stacks up your damage and it wastes a lot of damage because, you know, the storms, when they stack, only one of them will take effect, not both of them, uh, if you're doing it on, like, the same area. So what you really want to do is you want to wait for the full duration, which is, like, almost two seconds, I think. Um, so what you want to do here is, you know, storm, auto-attack, auto-attack, and then storm a second time. I kind of missed it that time because I was scared these guys would kill me, but I'm sure I'll get it next time. And that's, that's the proper combo that you should be doing when you're doing storms to maximize your damage. Alright, so I'm going to do D here. Okay, so I'll just show you on these creeps. So you do storm, auto attack, auto attack, and storm. And if you can fit in two auto attacks between your storms, then you know that uh, you've, you've got the maximum amount of time between storms and also the maximum amount of damage you could have done. So that's the best way to do it in general. Um, or you can just watch the blue bar and do it when, when it's about to end, of course. So here, I'm gonna storm, storm the tower and the keep here. And put some pressure on, uh, on their keep here. Zeratul died somehow. Not too, too pleased about that, but we're still in the lead. We have level 20, so they can't fight us all that easily. Um, however, we do need to be careful here because whoever whoever gets more skulls here is uh, has a really good chance to win. And since their golem is already at our core, we cannot let them get like you know too many skulls. So I'm gonna immediately try to get as many camps as I can here. It looks like my team is just gonna straight up go to the uh, boss, which is which is interesting. But you know, personally, I'm not going to do that. And I'm getting chase here. I'm just going to press D uh, because the 20% movement speed, there's absolutely no way they can actually chase me in time. That guy's still really trying though, so I'm going to storm him a couple times. Q, soak his grenade, and now I'm going to run over to where my team is. So this is actually like not the best way of doing doing it because you know the, the big one only gives you 30 and the small camps uh, in total give you 70. So there's really no no reason to like uh, there's no reason to go straight to the big one if you can just get all the small ones instead. But you know whatever. Do a couple more storms there, get some skulls. So it was very even again. I see Admin and backdooring. Uh, this is really stupid. Like like you're not gonna do shit here if you don't have a backup. Oh, it looks like they do have some backup, but. But that's still like it's nowhere near enough to be able to actually backdoor. I'm actually stuck. It's kind of annoying. Yeah, so they only got 10% of the course HP, uh, which which is not really worth it. Even though they have a golem here, this golem is gonna die extremely quickly because it's only 48 skills. And also we have a uh, we have a Gazlo, and Gazlo is really good at killing golems, so not too worried here. They will get a bit of core damage, uh, which is good for them. If they like convincingly win the next, I guess, golem uh, skull fight, then they have a pretty good chance of just ending it. But we should be able to get a lot more done than, than they. They can just because we're level 20 and they're not, and we have full map control. And the stronger team fight heroes. So I'm gonna ping this because I kinda want this to die, it, and it did. And uh, I'm gonna go join my teammates here now. 
we could do this, but right now, um, you know, their their core is already under attack. So I think we we can end it if we just all go together. I'm trying to join my teammates here. And yeah, I'm just gonna tell them to you know push and end. I think we can end it with one dead. As long as no one no one gets picked off. I'm gonna try and keep that the the shield on that core as low as possible. And uh shield myself here. Get rid of the creep wave. And at this point I'm just waiting for my team to come. Um I got mod there, but it doesn't matter, I can just E out. And I'm gonna press D here, get the full vision, and uh, I'm actually just gonna Archon here because he took so much damage. I I'm confident in the fight against them. I think I can kill that Rainer with Storms. Didn't quite get it. And I'm actually really low here. Wow. So that was pretty bad on my part, I guess. Uh, my teammates should be able to easily clean this up though. Hmm, that's a good VP. But they need something else. Alright, there we go. Good combo. They finally managed to pull it off. Should be able to get more than this. And at this point, we have catapults in their base and uh, a, you know, a Gazlo on their core, so we should be able to get a good amount of damage here. They should be able to end it here. I hope they can. Let's see, 20%, not quite it looks like, 13%. 9%. Okay, so the Zeratul will just end it, even if the Golem's done. Okay, so overall pretty close fight. You can see in terms of damage output, I had 52k, their Tychus only had 40k. So, um, you know, part of that is just because their Tychus wasn't very good. But uh, you can also see that the damage output is definitely comparable between, uh, you know, Tassadar and any other ranged assassin, if you go this build. Um, I didn't I didn't play it as well as I could have. I died once um, at the very end there, unfortunately. But you know, overall, it's a really solid build in my opinion. Uh, you basically utilize your vision and your movement speed to maneuver around the map, maneuver around battles, keep yourself in safe locations so you don't need to eat twice. And other than that, you know, just constantly poke at your opponents with double storms. Try not to stack them too much. And, uh, you know, after you practice it a while, I think you'll find that this is a very powerful build. So that's about it for me today. Thanks for watching, guys. Um, if you have any suggestions or comments, please let me know in the comment section below. And uh, please subscribe to the channel um, and like the video uh, because I'm going to be making a bunch of other awesome videos in the future. So make sure to keep your eye out for those. Anyways, thanks for watching and until next time.